Hi guys, welcome back aboard Got Old Athena for yet more DIY fun. I've got plenty of cool stuff planned for this week. I'd like to finish the settee area. The paint is supposed to show up a little bit later today and I've got some little locks coming in for the openings here in the back of the settee. Those might not get here in time, but other than that, I should be able to finish this. The aft cabin behind the nav station is looking a little bit cave-like. It's very dark in there. So I picked up this brand new opening port light that we can go ahead and install in there to let a little bit more light in. I've also got these deck fills and it's not supposed to rain this week so I'd like to get these installed. There's a water one, a waste one and a diesel one. I've also got this little area here over the nav station which is a little bit unfinished or as Ava has put it a giant eyesore. That's certainly no bueno so let's fix this. A few years back I gutted most of the interior to make some structural repairs pairs underneath the cabin sole. That was tons and tons of fun, mainly because of the insane amount of sanding and laying up fiberglass involved. So yeah, I'm glad I don't have to do that again. But when I was rebuilding the interior, I moved the bulkhead that used to be here further aft. It used to cut this port light in half, which looked kind of weird. The rest of the side of the cabin top is finished with a four or six millimeter piece of plywood. And that's what I'm planning to do back here too. And of course, I also want to remove this pokey bit here. The port light was easy to remove. I used a butyl based caulk about four years ago for sealing them. So far, no leaks and super easy to remove. It'll be interesting to see how long this butyl based caulk works because some of it has started to kind of stiffen up a little bit. But so far, so good. When I go to rebed this port light, I'll use butyl tape instead of the butyl based caulk. It'll be really cool to be able to do a little bit of a comparison between the two products just to see which one remains leak free the longest. There's a little bit of sanding or grinding required here to get rid of some unevenness. And I also need to cut away this piece of the old bulkhead here. Turns out the plywood that's used up here is four millimeters thick. I don't have a ton of that left, but I do have this small piece of scrap, which is perfect. I'll leave this a little bit oversized for now. I've added a couple of holes for some clamps for securing this thing. And I think we are good to go. So let's get some epoxy mixed up. For the sake of paranoia, I'm gonna coat the back of this with a few coats of unthickened epoxy. While I'm waiting for that first coat to gel, I might as well take care of the cleanup on the outside. Just as with the butyl tape, the butyl base caulk is incredibly easy to remove. And just a dab of paint thinner gets rid of the film that's left behind by the caulk. I've masked off on the outside of the boat to not get epoxy everywhere. I have cheated a little bit on this piece of plywood here to have the epoxy gel a little bit quicker. So I think we're ready to mix up some thickened epoxy. A little bit of 406 should do the trick. There are some areas here that I know that are gonna be low spots. Like for instance, this area here, up here. And also I know this area down here is gonna be critical so I've just applied a little bit extra thickened epoxy to those areas. A notched trowel would have been better for this, but I'm out of those, so a schmear will have to do. And smush. I think this is going to work out very well. I've cleaned up the squeeze out on the outside and also here on the inside. So far, this is looking very promising. I'm gonna leave this in place overnight to cure. So uh, let's move on to something else. The port light for the aft cabin seems like a good next step because I do need to order some fasteners in the correct length. And to figure out that length, well, we kind of have to start the process. Don't mind all of the dirt out in the cockpit, but I'm thinking somewhere right around there would be a good spot for that port light. This thing was not exactly cheap. I think it was 370 euros or something like that. And the very least I feel like they could do is to include a template for the hole you need to cut, but there is no such template. Not even the measurements for the hole you're supposed to cut are included in the instructions. So yeah, that's a zero out of 10 for ease of installation so far. So that's about 10 minutes of fiddling about that could have been avoided for the cost of a freaking piece of paper. Anywho, I need to make a template for another cutout. If I would have been mounting the port light somewhere where there was just solid fiberglass, my life would be a lot easier. 
But here, in the darkness, there is a layer of plywood, then there is an air gap, and then there is solid laminate. Something like this. Fiberglass, air gap, plywood. None of the port lights I could find could handle this width. And that makes this process a heck of a lot more fiddly, because I want to have a little reveal around the port light so that I can get down to a thickness that the port light can actually handle, but I also want that reveal to look nice. And that's where this flush trimming bit and the outer ring on this piece of MDF comes into the picture. So this will be the reveal around the port light. I think it'll look good, but there are still many steps ahead of us. I've just double checked to make absolutely sure that I've got enough room up here for my router because there is a piece of trim in the aft cabin and I don't want the router to collide with that because then my template here is useless. First surprise of the week. The air gap in here is not as big as I thought it was gonna be. I can barely get my finger in there. I thought it was gonna be bigger based on the air gap down by the shore power connection, but uh, yeah. It's not much of a gap here. I drilled a hole to check the thickness of the laminate and the laminate plus the plywood plus the tiny air gap is still bigger than the port light would be able to accommodate. So I have to do this, but my flush trimming bit here doesn't fit because there's a smaller air gap than I thought that was gonna be. So I have to beef up my template. The good thing about already having made a template is that I have a template for my next template. I then used the beefier template in the aft cabin to create a neat looking hole. The very last thing I did with this yesterday was to fill the gap here with thickened epoxy. As you might be able to see between here and up here, it's not a uniform gap. It's about five millimeters bigger up here. I don't want that unevenness to show up on the inside of the boat. That would look weird. So I've made this little ring here and coated it in epoxy. I'm gonna use this to take up that bit of unevenness. This fix is not something I'm super proud of. It's a little bit of a hack, but it'll work, so it's okay. Before I put my ring in place, I am gonna round over this edge here because I don't think there's enough room to do that once the ring is in. So let's fire up the noisemaker. I've adhered these two little spacers in place. Those will make sure that the ring sits the way I want it to. A little bit later today, I should be able to get the ring adhered in place, but for now, let's switch back to working on this thing. After having cleaned the old port light and a quick test fit, I'm just gonna use a little bit of filler to take up the gap between the two pieces of plywood. Last night I gave the bulkhead between the head and the saloon a quick sanding to knock down the grain of the wood. And then I used a little bit of filler to take care of any little imperfections and pinholes, stuff like that. And that means we're now ready for the second coat of Interprime 820. I'd say SVB got pretty lucky when they shipped this thing because if this had been hit a little bit harder, I'm pretty sure the can would have cracked open, but yeah, it looks like we're good. So let's go ahead and apply this. I don't need these spaces for the ring of deception in the aft cabin to be fully cured before I install the ring. I just need them to be firm enough that I can press in on them. And I think we're at that point now. So let me go ahead and get some thickened epoxy mixed up. I'm applying a generous amount of thickened epoxy. I can always just remove the squeeze out after I have put the ring in place. And smush. Look at all this glorious squeeze out. I think this is going to be very strong. This is coming along nicely. Maybe a little bit later today, I can put in a little fillet on that inside corner. And then tomorrow it's ready for me to cut the hole, paint everything and install the port light. It looks like I need just a dab more filler compound here, but that's okay. The paint I used here is the same stuff I used in the aft cabin, so it makes sense to paint those two areas at the same time, which would be tomorrow. So I've got plenty of time to just 
apply a little bit more filler. And while I'm at it, I might as well take care of these pesky pinholes I missed the first time around. Dang you, 407. Let me take care of this real quick and then I can head to the package picking up shop and uh, there should be a new hole saw waiting for me up there for the deck fills. Aha, that was a successful mission. This is the hole saw I've been waiting for for those deck fills but the clouds are looking pretty heavy. And I don't want it to start raining when I've just drilled a bunch of new holes in the deck. So let's postpone the deck fills until tomorrow. The filler I applied to the bulkhead here still needs about another hour or so before I can sand it and apply the last coat of primer. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna head up to the workshop and take care of a little bit of varnishing. And you guys will see that a little bit later in the video. Good morning, guys. It is the next day. I was able to apply the last coat of wood sealer to the mahogany slats up at the workshop yesterday. So that means today I can apply the last coat of satin finish and that means the slats are ready to be installed tomorrow along with some insulation on the side of the hull when I put the settee together tomorrow. Let's start today by cutting the big hole here in the aft cabin for the new port light. This is a mighty fine looking hole if I do say so myself and it should be a nice snug fit. Yep. This seems like a really nice quality port light. If only they had included the cutout for the hole, then I would have been over the moon, but eh, you can't have it all. I don't know if the difference shows up on camera, but there's a lot more light in here now, which is really nice because next week I'm gonna start building a little enclosure down the aft end of the aft cabin for the inverter and the isolation transformer. After a quick little test fit, it turns out the new hole saw is the perfect size for the new deck fills. So let's go ahead and get some holes drilled. To make absolutely sure the holes end up where I want them, I'm gonna drill the first hole, the pilot hole here from the inside. Damn it. Well, it appears a piece of Athena has set sail. I will keep an eye on it and fish it out when it's closer to land. This is what the core in the deck looks like. It's 18 millimeters worth of plywood sandwiched in between two layers of solid fiberglass. If there is one thing that's important to protect aboard a boat, it is the integrity of the core. Replacing the entire core is a, uh, well, let's say somewhat time consuming activity. So I wanna make absolutely sure that no water can get in contact with this plywood. I've got a pretty cool example here because I've got two different sizes of holes, a ginormous hole and a tiny hole. And I'm gonna use two different methods for sealing these. For the smaller holes, I'm gonna use drill fill drill, which involves an oversized hole, thickened epoxy, and then drilling the correct size hole through the epoxy once it is cured. And then for the larger holes, I could do the same, but that would be a ginormous waste of thickened epoxy. And I don't really need to do that because I can get in there. This time around, I am trying a somewhat different approach. I'm filling these smaller holes from the bottom up. Sometimes when filling a tiny hole from the top down, you end up with this tiny little annoying air bubble at the bottom, which means the bottom of the thickened epoxy is not flush with the bottom of the deck. Yep, and it looks like that's the case here too. We're almost flush with the surface, but not quite. But now I can just add a little bit extra from the top and it'll be perfect. Look at that, perfectly filled little holes. For the bigger holes, I am just applying a little bit of thickened epoxy to my gloved finger and then giving the hole a thorough probing. It's not terribly warm here right now, so I knew it was gonna take a while for the epoxy to cure. So I moved on to some other stuff, like for instance, fiddling around with a little fillet in the aft cabin and also applying two coats of interior finish 7070 to the bulkhead. That means from a durability standpoint, the bulkhead here is done. I think it turned out fairly well. I do have some orange peeling that I'm not too pleased about, but other than that, it's looking pretty dang spiffy. This is the stuff I used, interior finish 7070, and I must have messed something up because the other areas in the boat where I've used this stuff, I didn't get any orange peeling and it's really nice to work with. So yeah, I must have messed something up. It's not a big deal. I can always just sand out the orange peel and then apply another coat 
of interior finish to this bulkhead when I'm painting the rest of the settee. Here in the aft cabin, I'm all done fiddling with the fillet. It's not a huge fillet, but I think it's gonna make a big difference in the end because there is no sharp corner down here for dirt and grime to get stuck in. So it's gonna be a lot easier to keep this clean and it also looks a little bit nicer. This now feels silky smooth. So let's go ahead and get some paint on this. Before I got wise to the joy of interior finish 770, I used this stuff. Hempel's Multicoat. It's a one part paint, so it's super easy to use. It goes on really nice, leaves a smooth surface, but it does tend to yellow over time. There are a couple of places here at Boratina where I still have this Multicoat. One of them, which is also the biggest pain to repaint, is the side of the cabin tub up here. Because to repaint it, I have to remove all of the port lights. So I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna hold off until some of the port lights start leaking. We need to remove them anyways. Then we can sand away all of the one part paint, get it primed and apply interior finish 770. So even though multi-coat is not my favorite paint anymore because of the yellowing over time, I'm still gonna use it in this small area here where I put in place the plywood. As you can see, it's already white. That's because I used a little bit of the primer I had left over from the bulkhead, because generally speaking, it is safe to go over a two part paint once it's cured with a one part paint. The other way around, eh. The aft cabin is another one of those areas where I've used multi-coat. And uh, well, I'm gonna stick with it for now and then we can always repaint later. It is such a shame that this stuff yellows over time because it goes on really nice, leaves a smooth surface and a really nice matte finish, which I like, but yeah, the yellowing over time is no bueno. You might be wondering why I've gone through the trouble of painting the hull, seeing as I'm just gonna be adding insulation. Well, I've had a couple of the areas where I've tried to stick this stuff to bare fiberglass, just not bond that well. So I think it would be well worth it to just apply a little bit of paint. I accidentally ordered the AF version of Armaflex. That's the top of the line, the hyper expensive version. The stuff I've used for the rest of the boat is the, I think it's called XG version of Armaflex. Now the AF has micro band technology in the foam, which I think is supposed to keep mold or something like that at bay. It'll be fun to see how the two products compare to each other because there is a noticeable price difference. I just, I was in a hurry when I ordered this and I didn't notice that I picked the AF version. And well, now I guess we get to do a little bit of a long-term product test. I need to create a paper template for each piece of insulation so that I get a nice snug fit. That makes it a somewhat time consuming task, but I think it's worth it to get a nice snug fit. I don't know if it's just me being crazy, but I think I've used more diesel this past week with the insulation removed from the side of the hull. So it'll be good to get it back up. The insulation is now covered by a little bit of plywood. I've done that to just protect it for once we start using these areas for storage, I don't wanna be crushing the insulation. That would kind of ruin the point. Over the course of this week, I've spent a bit of time up at the workshop working on the mahogany slats from last week's video. I applied three coats of wood sealer to the back and four coats of wood sealer to the front, and then followed by a final coat of gold spar satin finish to the front. This is the result of my efforts. I think it was well worth it. These are absolutely beautiful. The mahogany slats are in place. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, I still need to build some trim to cover up the knee here and the chain plates back there. Door for the cabinet here. The entire settee needs to be painted, but yeah. Things are chucking along. I also put up the slats here in the galley. I think that looks pretty good. Of course, there's gonna be some headliner up here to cover this bit of ugliness. And I also applied a couple of coats of paint. That means tomorrow I can install this port light and also the port light in here in the aft cabin. The port lights in the cabin top are a little bit of a pain in the behind to install when you're just one person because of these barrel nuts. I don't have anybody here inside of the boat to hold them in place. So I have to tape them in place. I've applied a bit of butyl tape around the port light. This should smush nice and flat over the next few days. 
One area of concern is how to seal around the fasteners. I can't do that with butyl tape because these are going to be rotating when they go in. That's going to squeeze out the butyl tape. That won't work. So I think I'm going to have to use a little bit of Sigaflex to seal the fasteners. But let's get this in place first. And yet more tape to secure the inner frame. Now what's likely going to happen is I'm going to bump the inner frame. It's going to fall down. The barrel nuts are going to go flying out everywhere. And it's going to be a right pain in the behind. We've got plenty of butyl squeezing out. So that's very reassuring. There's still a little bit of clean up to be done but other than that the port light is in. You can still see where the bulkhead was located because the frame is cut in half but yeah I don't have a new frame for it so I can't do anything about that but at least there's no longer any exposed fiberglass. I'll start looking for a long piece of mahogany so that I can replace this old piece of trim and have it go all the way back to the bulkhead. But uh, let's get the next port light installed. Whereas the port lights in the cabin top use these barrel nuts, the port light for the aft cabin has the threads cut directly into the outer frame. There are pros and cons to both. A big pro to this version is that it's gonna be a lot easier to install. I'm pleased with how this port light came out. I think it's a good addition to the aft cabin. I would have liked to use the same type of port light I used in the aft cabin for these port lights up here on the cabin tub. But the thing about the type of port light in the aft cabin is that it does not conform to the curve that's here. These will actually bend a little bit. There's a bunch more stuff I wanted to get into this video, but I'm having some technical issues with my god dang editing software. So I better end this week's video here. I hope to see all of you guys back here aboard Athena next week, where we're going to get started on the aft cabin and maybe also finish the trim for the settee area. But uh, yeah, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.